Hey everyone, ready to explore something amazing? I am. Today we're going deep inside your cells to learn about something called mitophagy. Ooh, that sounds intense. It is. It's this super cool process that basically keeps your cells clean and running smoothly. Like a cellular cleaning crew. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're using this article from S.A. Genie. It's called Mitophagy, the Cells Cleanup Crew for Healthy Living. And honestly, it's kind of mind-blowing. I'm ready to have my mind blown. Okay, so imagine this. Your cells are like tiny cities. And inside each city, there are these little power plants called mitochondria. Mitochondria, right? I remember those from biology class. They make energy for the cell. You got it. They're like the engines that keep everything going. Okay, so what does this have to do with cleaning? Well, just like any engine, after a while, those mitochondria can get worn out and start to break down. Ah, I see. So what happens? <laughs> <laughs> those old busted mitochondria and gets rid of them. So it's like the city's waste management system taking out the trash. Exactly. But it's even cooler than that because mitophagy doesn't just throw those old mitochondria away. It actually breaks them down and recycles their parts. Whoa, hold on. So the cell can actually reuse the pieces of the old mitochondria. Yep. It's super efficient, and this whole process is crucial for keeping our cells healthy and functioning properly. This is blowing my mind already, and we're just getting started. I know, right? <laughs> but I have to ask, how does a cell even know when a mitochondrion is ready for the recycling bin? Are they, like, sending out smoke signals? That's a great question. It all comes down to a really intricate system of proteins and signals inside the cell. Okay, walk me through it. So there's this one protein called PINK1, and it's basically like a quality control inspector for the mitochondria. PIK1, got it. So PINK1 is like checking all the mitochondria, making sure they're up to code. Pretty much. It's constantly scanning for any signs of damage or wear and tear. And if it finds a problem... It calls in the tow truck. Exactly. Well, not a literal tow truck, but another protein called Parkin. Okay, so PNK1 is the inspector and Parkin is the repo man. <laughs> yeah, you could think of it that way. So when PNK1 finds a damaged mitochondrion, it tags it for removal. And then Parkin comes along, grabs onto it, and hauls it away to be dismantled. So it's like a perfectly choreographed dance of proteins happening inside every single cell in our bodies. It really is. And this dance is happening all the time, keeping our cells clean and functioning at their best. It's incredible. Yeah. But what happens if something goes wrong with this dance? Like what if the music stops or one of the dancers trips? That's where things can get a little tricky because when mitophagy isn't working properly, it can have some pretty serious consequences for our health. Okay, now I'm a little worried. What kind of consequences are we talking about? Well, for one thing, a buildup of damaged mitochondria can lead to something called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress? That sounds bad. It is. It's basically like rust building up inside the cell, causing damage and dysfunction. So it's like the trash isn't just sitting there. It's actually starting to rot and stink up the whole place. That's a good analogy. And this oxidative stress has been linked to a whole bunch of health problems, including some pretty serious diseases. Oh, no. Like what? Well... One of the most well-known connections is with Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's? Really? What does cellular cleanup have to do with a brain disorder? It turns out that mutations in the genes for PNK1 and Parkin, those proteins we talked about earlier, can actually increase the risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Wow. So a problem with cellular recycling could lead to a neurodegenerative disease. Yeah. That's a lot to take in. It is. And it really underscores just how important mitophagy is for our overall health. Absolutely. But now I'm wondering, if mitophagy is so crucial, how do our cells make sure it's working properly? Is there some kind of internal control system? You're on the right track. Mitophagy is actually very tightly regulated. It needs to be balanced just right. Okay, why is that? What's the problem with too much or too little cleaning? Well, if there's too much mitophagy, the cell could actually start to break down healthy mitochondria, which would be a big problem. Right, like taking out perfectly good appliances just because they're a little dusty. Exactly. But on the flip side, if there's not enough mitophagy, those damaged mitochondria will start to build up and cause all sorts of problems. So it's a delicate balancing act. But how does the cell manage to strike that balance? One of the key players in this balancing act is an enzyme called AMPK. It's basically the cell's energy sensor. AMPK, okay, so it's like the cell's fuel gauge. You got it. When the cell starts to run low on energy, AMPK gets activated and sends out a signal that basically says, hey, we need to ramp up the recycling. So AMPK is like 
Time to break down some old stuff and make some new energy. Exactly. And that signal from AMPK leads to an increase in mitophagy, helping the cell to replenish its energy stores. That's fascinating. So our cells are constantly monitoring their energy levels and adjusting their cleanup routines accordingly. Yep. It's all about maintaining that delicate balance, ensuring the cell has enough energy to function properly without sacrificing healthy mitochondria. This is incredible. I had no idea there was so much going on inside our cells. But you mentioned earlier that mitophagy isn't just about energy levels, right? Mm -hmm. There are other factors that come into play. Right. There's another really important factor we need to talk about. Okay. I'm all ears. It's all about how mitochondria change and adapt within the cell. Hmm. Okay. I thought they were just kind of stuck there, like little batteries. Nope, they're actually incredibly dynamic. They can divide and fuse together, almost like they're constantly reshaping and reorganizing themselves. Whoa, that's wild. Why do they do that? It's all about efficiency. Sometimes it's better to have lots of smaller mitochondria, and sometimes it's better to have a few larger ones. They're like little transformers. Combining and splitting apart, depending on the situation. Exactly. And this whole process, this constant reshaping and reorganizing, is called mitochondrial dynamics. Mitochondrial dynamics. Okay. Got it. Uh. But how does this tie back into mitophagy? Well, it turns out that mitochondrial dynamics plays a big role in regulating mitophagy. So the way mitochondria change and adapt can actually affect how well the cleanup crew is working. Precisely. For example, when a mitochondrion is damaged, it might split off from the others, kind of like isolating itself. So it's like, don't come near me, I'm contagious. Uh, yeah, kind of. And that isolation makes it easier for the mitophagy machinery to identify and remove the damaged mitochondrion. That's so cool. It's like the cell has this whole intricate system for identifying and dealing with problems. It really does. It's an amazing example of how our bodies are constantly working to maintain balance and keep things running smoothly. It makes you appreciate just how complex and sophisticated our cells are. Absolutely. And all of this is happening inside every single cell in our bodies all the time. Mind blowing. Yeah. But you know, we've been talking a lot about the nuts and bolts of mitophagy. I'm curious about the bigger picture. How does all of this affect our health on a larger scale? That's a great question. And it's where things get really interesting because mitophagy isn't just about keeping individual cells healthy. It's also crucial for the health of our entire bodies. Okay. So a healthy cell equals a healthy body. Well, it's a bit more nuanced than that. But the basic idea is that by keeping our cells clean and efficient, mitophagy helps to protect us from a whole range of diseases. I mean, really? So this microscopic cleanup crew is actually helping to prevent disease. Exactly. And we're not just talking about minor stuff here. Mitophagy has been linked to everything from neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's to metabolic disorders like diabetes and obesity. Whoa, that's a pretty impressive resume for a bunch of tiny proteins. It is. And it really highlights just how important mitophagy is for our overall well-being. Think of it like this. If our cells are like little factories, then mitophagy is the maintenance crew that keeps those factories running smoothly. Okay, I like that analogy. Yeah. So if the maintenance crew isn't doing its job, the whole factory starts to fall apart. Exactly. And that can lead to all sorts of problems, both at the cellular level and at the level of the whole body. This is fascinating, but it's also a little scary. I mean, if something goes wrong with mitophagy, it sounds like there could be some serious consequences. That's true. Impaired mitophagy has been implicated in a wide range of health problems. So it's like letting the trash pile up in our cells. Eventually, it's going to start causing problems. Exactly. And those problems can manifest in different ways, depending on which cells are affected and how severely mitophagy is impaired. Okay, so we know that mitophagy is important for preventing disease. But can it also help us to age healthier? I mean, is there a link between mitophagy and the aging process itself? That's a great question, and it's one that scientists are really digging into right now. What they're finding is fascinating. It seems that as we get older, mitophagy naturally becomes less efficient. Oh, no. So it's like our cellular cleanup crew starts to slow down as we age. It does seem that way. And that decline in mitophagy might contribute to some of the age-related declines we see in our health. So it's like a vicious cycle. We age, our cells get less efficient at cleaning up, and that makes us age even faster. It's a complex process, but that's a good way to think about it. The good news is that there might be ways to counteract this decline in mitophagy. Okay, now we're talking. Tell me more. Research suggests that certain lifestyle interventions can actually help to boost mitophagy, even as we age. Really? Like what? 
Things like exercise and caloric restriction have both been shown to stimulate mitophagy. Wait a minute, so you're telling me that hitting the gym and watching what I eat can actually help my cells to clean up their act? Yep, <laughs> it's pretty amazing, right? Both exercise and caloric restriction seem to activate those cellular pathways that regulate mitophagy, giving our cleanup crews a much-needed boost. Okay, that's definitely motivating. But how exactly do exercise and caloric restriction work their magic on mitophagy? What's happening at the cellular level? Well, with exercise, you're essentially putting your cells through a challenging workout, which creates a mild level of stress. So it's like giving ourselves a little boot camp. Exactly. And that stress actually triggers the cells to adapt and become stronger. That makes sense. Our bodies are amazing at adapting to challenges. They really are. And part of that adaptation process involves increased mitophagy. The cells basically start to clear out any damaged mitochondria and make way for new, healthier ones. So it's like a cellular renovation project. Yeah. Out with the old, in with the new. Precisely. And as for caloric restriction, well, it seems to work by activating a very important enzyme that we talked about earlier, AMPK. Ah, yes. AMPK, the cell's energy sensor. Uh, Remember. Right. So when we reduce our calorie intake, our cells sense that energy is becoming scarce and that triggers AMPK to kick into gear. And AMPK is like, time to ramp up the recycling. You got it. AMPK sends out signals that increase mitophagy, helping the cells to generate more energy from the available resources. So it's like our cells are saying, hey, times are tough. We need to be more efficient with what we have. Exactly. It's a fascinating example of how our bodies have evolved to adapt to different environments and challenges. This is incredible. It really highlights the interconnectedness of everything in our bodies from our diet and exercise habits to the microscopic processes happening inside our cells. Absolutely. And the more we learn about these connections, the more we realize just how powerful lifestyle interventions can be. It's empowering to know that we have some control over these processes. But what about more targeted interventions? Are scientists exploring other ways to boost mitophagy, like maybe with drugs or therapies? Absolutely. There's a lot of exciting research happening in this area. Tell me more. Well, one promising avenue is developing drugs that mimic the effects of caloric restriction. Oh, interesting. So tricking ourselves into thinking they're in a low energy state, even if they're not. Exactly. And by activating AMPK, these drugs could potentially trigger increased mitophagy. That's clever. What other approaches are scientists looking into? Well, another really intriguing area is gene therapy. Gene therapy. Now that sounds futuristic. It is cutting edge stuff. But the idea is to deliver genes that encode for those key mitophagy proteins like PIK1 and Parkin directly into cells. So it's like giving the cells a software update, fixing any glitches in their mitophagy code. You could think of it that way. And this could be especially helpful for people who have genetic mutations that impair mitophagy. That makes sense. It's like a targeted approach to fixing the problem at its source. Exactly. And there are even less invasive approaches being investigated, like using peptides. Peptides? Yes. Peptides are short chains of amino acids, and they can be designed to specifically target and activate mitophagy pathways. So it's like sending a special delivery message to the cells, telling them to ramp up their cleanup efforts. You got it. And these peptides could potentially be delivered through injections or even nasal sprays. Wow. That would be much easier than gene therapy. It would. But of course, all of these therapies are still in the early stages of research. There's still a lot we need to learn about the safety and efficacy of these approaches. That's true. But it's exciting to see so much research being done in this area. It gives me hope that we might one day have even more tools to help our bodies stay healthy and age gracefully. But, you know, with all this talk about boosting mitophagy, I have to ask, is there a risk of going too far? Could overstimulating mitophagy be harmful? That's a really important question, and it's one that researchers are carefully considering. I mean, it seems like too much of a good thing could be a bad thing, right? Exactly. While boosting mitophagy holds tremendous promise, it's crucial to find that sweet spot, that optimal level of activity. Okay, so what happens if mitophagy goes into overdrive? Well, if too many mitochondria are being removed, the cell might not have enough energy to function properly. Right, like if the cleanup crew gets too enthusiastic and starts throwing away perfectly good furniture. Uh-huh, exactly. It's all about balance. We need just the right amount of mitophagy to keep our cells healthy and functioning at their best. So it's really a delicate dance that we need to study carefully. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I think it's worth taking a step back and summarizing what we've learned so far about the potential downsides of impaired mitophagy. Okay, yeah, good idea. 
we covered a lot of ground. It's good to pause and recap. What are some of the key takeaways for you? Well, for me, it's been eye-opening to see just how far-reaching the consequences of impaired mitophagy can be. It's not just about energy production. It's about protecting ourselves from damage, preventing disease, and even potentially slowing down the aging process. Absolutely. It's a stark reminder that what's happening at the cellular level can have profound effects on our overall health and well-being. But there's one more fascinating aspect of mitophagy that we haven't touched on yet, and I think you'll find it quite intriguing. Okay. I'm hooked. What is it? It's the connection between mycophagy and your gut microbiome. Wait, what? My gut bacteria can affect what's happening inside my cells. It seems so. It's still a new area of research, but there's growing evidence that the trillions of bacteria living in our intestines can actually influence mitophagy. Hold on, seriously, how is that even possible? Are they like sending emails to my mitochondria? Not quite emails, but something similar. They produce these tiny chemical messengers called metabolites that can interact with our cells. Okay, so it's more like snail mail then. Ha uh ha, -huh. yeah, you could think of it that way. And some of these metabolites can actually affect the signaling pathways that regulate mitophagy. So my gut bacteria are sending messages to my cells, telling them how to manage their cleanup. In a way, yes. It's like they're part of the cellular communication network. Wow, our bodies are so interconnected, it's amazing. But what kind of messages are they sending? Are they good or bad for mitophagy? It depends on the type of bacteria and the metabolites they produce. Some are beneficial, while others can be detrimental. Okay, so give me an example of a good message. Well, have you heard of short-chain fatty acids? Hmm, hmm, vaguely. Hmm. Aren't those produced by good bacteria in the gut? Exactly. When we eat fiber, the good bacteria in our gut ferment it and produce short-chain fatty acids. Okay, and? And those short-chain fatty acids have been shown to promote mitophagy. No way. So eating more fiber can actually help to boost our cellular cleanup crew. It seems so. It's another reason why a fiber-rich diet is so important for our overall health. I'm definitely adding more fiber to my grocery list. Yeah. But it also makes you wonder, what happens when our gut microbiome is out of whack? Can that mess with mitophagy? That's a great question, and it's something scientists are actively studying. There's growing evidence that an imbalance in the gut microbiome called dysbiosis can disrupt mitophagy and contribute to various health issues. So it's like a domino effect. Yeah. An unhealthy gut can lead to unhealthy cells, which can then lead to disease. That's a good way to put it. It really highlights the interconnectedness of our bodies. It's mind-blowing and a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. It's like, how am I supposed to keep track of everything that's happening inside me? Uh -huh. I know what you mean. But I think the key takeaway here is that our health is a complex web of interconnected systems. Okay, so what's the best way to support all of these systems, including our cellular cleanup crew? Well, a healthy lifestyle is a great place to start. Things like a balanced diet rich in fiber, regular exercise, and stress management can all have positive effects on our gut microbiome and our cellular health. Makes sense. It's all about creating the right environment for our bodies to thrive. Exactly. And as we wrap up our deep dive into mitophagy, I think it's important to remember that this is just the tip of the iceberg. I know, right? Every time we uncover one layer, there's a whole new layer underneath. Exactly. And that's what makes science so exciting. There's always more to learn. But even with what we know now, I think it's clear that mitophagy is a crucial process that plays a vital role in our health and longevity. It's definitely given me a whole new appreciation for the complexity and resilience of our bodies. And I'm definitely going to be paying more attention to my gut health from now on. Me too. It's amazing to think that these tiny microbes living inside us can have such a big impact on our well-being. It really is. Well, thank you so much for taking us on this in incredible journey into the world of mitophagy. I feel like I've learned so much. It's been my pleasure, and I hope our listeners feel inspired to learn even more about this fascinating process and how they can support their own cellular cleanup crew. Absolutely. Thanks again for joining us today. And for our listeners, be sure to tune in next time for another deep dive into the amazing world of science.